I guess I'll go ahead and get started. Um, hello, uh, my name is John Chidaki. Um, I work at the California Digital Library, and as many of you know, CDL is a system-wide group that works across the entire University of California to support libraries and researchers um, across the UC system. The, the nature of our structure is that we work very much on work that's intended to be at scale, right? So we're looking at projects and focuses that are not on an individual campus, but looking um, how we can affect change across the entire system and across the nation, across the, the globe. Um, and so the talk today will be about work that we have done with Dryad um, in that kind of context. Um, and so really this, 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 uh, this story starts in 2018 for California Digital Library and for the UC. At the time we were reevaluating our the ways that we were supporting libraries uh, at CDL, the UC libraries, and how we were supporting UC researchers when it came to data publishing. And as a result of that process, we embarked on a partnership with Dryad. Um, we, we thought about what is our vision for data publishing? What is the purpose of what we are doing and what we are offering? And really came up with this um, statement around adoption focus, about how do we focus on getting more adoption on researchers within UC to publish their data sets. We had a data publishing program previously, but it was one that um, did not have a high adoption rate. We also wanted to make sure that it was at no cost to, to researchers. So we know that we wanted to incentivize best practices like curation and like better metadata for data deposits and just to, 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 incentive, to ensure that there is discoverability. But we also wanted to make sure that researchers weren't bearing additional cost in their process. So we wanted to be able to hold that cost for, for them. And we wanted to make sure that with adoption comes just the need for embedding it into their workflows, something that's easy for them to, to accomplish. And so, as, and, and also as we were talking about um, with, the, with all projects at CDL, we really wanted to make sure that the work that we were doing is not just for us, but really is something that can build a basis for uh, global, global uh, upscaling of, the, of data publishing practices. And so we set up this, these specific goals. You know, how do we drive adoption? How do we open up a global community? Um, how do we create a more nimble service? And how do we support researchers' needs and innovate? And came to the, the partnership that we have now with, with Dryad. We are now across the entire UC system Dryad members. Um, and we now have uh, the ability for any researcher within the University of California to submit to Dryad, have their data sets curated and published. We are able to cover that cost on their behalf. And we're able to support innovation across the entire globe through our partnership. And so this is really you know, one of the things that we were really trying to focus on was not just um, how do we support Nobel laureates and their research, but really how do we support all types of research that go across the, the campuses. And this includes undergrads and research that's happening in social sciences as well as lab sciences, and really about how do we create um, spaces for emerging topics. So you know, with the COVID pandemic, we have a lot of research that needed to happen very quickly and, and get out very quickly, but needed the touch of curation. And so being able to connect to all of the researchers across the UC was definitely one of the things we were trying to do. And so when we think about what we were trying to achieve and what goals we put in place, we, um, you know, within one year, we saw a amazing amounts of success. And some of this has to do with the fact that Dryad had a much more name recognition that we, than, than our internal data publishing platform. Some of it had to do with the embeddedness of Dryad into the publishing uh, process. But really one of the, you know, the, the main goals that we put in place for ourselves, the, the way that we, we wanted to uh, influence change across our system and across the, the globe was, was around this idea of adoption and cost savings and best practices. And in each of those cases, we were able to achieve our goals. And so I think I'll, I'll turn it over to Jen Gibson from Dryad to talk a little bit more about kind of the, the work that's been done in those, those years just to to ensure that that can happen across other campuses as well. Okay, sorry, bear with me. I just have to um, change slide decks, unfortunately.
and give you a nice view of Western Canada. Okay, great, there, hi. I wish I could see you um, a little bit better. Um, the lights are awfully bright, um, but it's great to be here. Um, it's really great to see so many familiar faces. I'm Jennifer Gibson, I'm, I'm the executive director of Dryad as of week nine. I've been here for eight weeks, this is my ninth week, and, and what a week um, to have uh, and, and to be here at CNI. We may have met before. Um, I changed my name when I got married a couple years ago. I was Jennifer McLennan uh, when I worked with Spark from 2005 to um, 2011, where I had the, the great pleasure um, to work with the library community and the, the library adjacent community. After that, I went away for 10 years. I actually live in the UK now. And I, I went away to work with eLife, which you may know as a, a biology and medicine journal and initiative from the funders of research to transform science publishing. So it was a great opportunity for me to work on the front lines uh, with research in, uh, in biology um, in the main. We tried to get into medicine, but it's really still a work in progress. I also um, had the opportunity to, to work with you all um, through Force 11, where I was on the board with John for a few years, and uh, through the Open Access Scholarly Publishing Association, where I'm currently the, the chair of the, the board of directors. So very parallel initiatives, all um, intending to advance open research to scholarship very broadly. What I'm here um, to talk about today is the collaboration between a dryad and institutional uh, institutional members and institutional libraries. So um, as my colleagues at Daniela Lowenberg, um, whom you probably know from Dryad as well as CDL, and John um, have helped me to understand, Dryad is very much a component in a broad and powerful system for open research. So we want you to see us as sitting alongside a lot, a lot of other um, important components, including the other services on campus, which I'll talk about. Uh, we are a component and, and partner to a lot of other services as well. So I'm not going to talk in detail to our partnership with, with uh, publishers um, or the work that, that we're doing directly with researchers, but really hone my, my, my brief remarks here on our relationship with, with the institutional libraries. So we'll talk broadly about that relationship, um, talk in specific to how we connect with other campus services, uh, and then I'll describe the institutional membership program, which I believe was born of a CNI meeting in 2018, and then talk about a few thoughts that I've got for, for moving forward, all in a very brief 10 minutes or so. So just to reintroduce you to, um, to Dryad very briefly. So you know, I would characterize us as an open data publishing platform rather than a data repository. So um, with you, I think we sense an opportunity to, to seek much greater engagement with the data in the online environment. But we're also a community uh, with our institutional members committed to realizing a broad sharing and reuse of research data. The platform today represents over 43,000 uh, publications, um, which in turn represent the work of over 175,000 researchers, 32,000 institutions worldwide, and over 1,200 academic journals. So again, I'm not gonna be talking about the Dryad integration with publisher workflows and our, our publisher partners, but rather um, this is a reflection of the data that we have in the system today. The vision of the Dryad community is, is not only that we have open access to all the research data, but that that data is also routinely reused. So that, that's the tricky part. As, as we know, I know a lot of you are working toward a common direction. And the way that we feel that we can help to do that is by enabling and promoting the reuse of research data through the, the Dryad platform. And I just I wanted to make note that um, the Dryad is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation uh, registered in North Carolina. And uh, we were founded by researchers and colleagues, some of whom are, are here today. I think Jean Greenberg was one of, Jane Greenberg was one of the founding members of Dryad back in 2009 formally, but I think informally as, as early as, as 2007. 
And the way that, that I see Dryad um, helping as, as a component in, in this, this network is that we make uh, data sharing easy and powerful. So we won't have time to talk about our, our user interface today either, um, but it's very easy. It's very easy for authors to submit their data um, and to provide the, the metadata that we want to describe the data through our submission portal. And then we make the reuse of data a compelling argument uh, by our presentation of the data, very much like what Bob was showing uh, with the, a web page that describes the, the data set and, and all of the metadata automatically. So we make it compelling, the, the reuse of the data through the platform as well. So now just focusing on, on how we see ourselves as, as part of this interconnected system of, of, common, of initiatives working very much um, in parallel for advancing open research for modern with using modern technology. So Dryad sits alongside um, domain repositories, institutional repositories, other generalist repositories, and the data curation network I wanted to, to make sure and include, as well as other services like, like publishers. So um, publishers are, are vast, so I hesitate to, to say a service, but in, in terms of making um, openly accessible research objects from across the workflow, um, publishers um, have a function there which exists in parallel to registered reports, protocols, data sets, and, and software, and data, of course, is, is Dryad's focus. So um, our institutional members um, have in invested in Dryad for, for five reasons, as I've come to understand so far. So this is where I'm looking for your feedback. I'd like to sound this out with you and, and hopefully get, get uh, some, some time to chat while we're here at the meeting. So uh, our institutional partners are investing in Dryad um, because we're a powerful ally in achieving your open research strategy. So for the reasons that, I, that I've just said and that we, um, we interconnect with your other systems and we sit alongside other services that deliver open access to the research and the software, we are a, 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 a powerful ally. We're a, a complement to, to your, your other initiatives and your, your broad strategy. Another reason why our institutional members are, are leaning into Dryad um, is because the research community and many research communities are already coming to Dryad. So in evolutionary biology and ecology, um, the, uh, the, the journal editors and, and their colleagues in research did the work to establish buy-in into um, open data sharing and to get the platform moving at that time. So there's traction, not just in, in EEB, but many other disciplines as well, where researchers just have the habit, they have the good practice to go and share their, their data at Dryad. So I know from our work before that from an institutional perspective, it can be really hard to get engagement from the faculty and convince them to step out of their usual workflows and behaviors to share their data, and Dryad's already there. Dryad's already connected to, to the community. So we can, we can offer you that, that advantage, that traction. Similarly, um, Dryad has a really powerful connection with the publishing workflow. So it's not essential um, that, that you share data in association with, um, with the publication. We will take data that isn't associated with, with a research article now, but we are connected to the publishing workflow in such a way that when an author is submitting um, their article for publication, the journal can ask if they share their data. They can send them automatically off to the Dryad platform, submit their data, have their data curated, and then we'll return a DOI to the publisher so that they can interlink that, that data with, with the pu published article. So that's very powerful. Again, as you know, working within the established workflows and practices of the research community to, to engage them in, in open sharing. A fourth reason why our institutional partners are, are leaning in with Dryad um, is that we, we champion best practice. We help to advocate and exemplify best practices in, in data sharing and the potential for data reuse. So we've worked very hard, especially with my colleagues at CDL, to establish very high standards for data sharing. It's a CC0 license only for the data at Dryad, and we've got is consistent metadata capture processes that really aid the discoverability of, of the data downstream. So we can help if, if this is what you'd like your researchers to be doing as well, Dryad is an excellent partner um, to help make that case on campus. And finally, uh, as a nonprofit organization, Dryad is driven by our, our mission and our vision, and we want to contribute, uh, again, alongside other um, um, uh, initiatives with common ambitions, to a global environment for research that is equitable and inclusive, as well as, as open. All that said, 
um, one of the key questions that emerges for our institutional partners is how we supplement um, institutional and other campus repositories which have already drawn significant investment. So just a couple of points to, to help with that. The first is that Dryad publishes data exclusively. So um, institutional repositories, other generalist repositories will take content from um, a wide range of types, whereas Dryad's focus is strictly on the data. So we're uh, an expert complement to generalist repository work. And the second thing is that um, there were uh, you can mirror either the metadata or the data itself from Dryad into your own system. So um, you can take the, the full data or you can just take the descriptive data and stick it into your, um, your data reposit repository or your generalist repository or just the descriptive data into your catalog. So for example, um, UBC, which is our first Canadian partner and won't be the last, um, sends our full data um, into their uh, Dataverse Columbia um, takes uh, the, the high-level data and puts it in their search, and the University of Helsinki puts the entire um, uh, data sets into their institutional repository. So again, our aim here is to connect and support and to be an important part of your puzzle and not the entire puzzle. We're not trying to be a one-stop shop. So I, I hope that helps paint a picture for, um, for the opportunity and the value of institutional partnership with Dryad, but um, again, I'm here to, to seek your feedback. So, so before I hang up, um, let me uh, describe the scope of the institutional membership program as well, and then just a couple of my own thoughts for, for the potential for working together uh, moving forward. So, um, so far, uh, this program, again, uh, as we said, so conceived of here at CNI 2018 and, and launched after that, um, we've got 44 academic institutions and one research funder, CZI, so far. And the program is, it was designed by the folks here. So we had a workshop with institutions who talked about the value and potential, and, and that's hopefully what, what you'll agree is, is, is what's played out. Uh, the institutional uh, memberships represent 25% of Dryad's non-grant revenue today. These are all of our members. Um, if you had time to read this slide, I would like for you to pick out that we represent large and small institutions as well, and that we've got some geographic reach. So we're not as broad as we'd like to be. We certainly aspire to be, um, to be more geographically diverse, but uh, we've got some great traction with representation in Saudi Arabia, uh, Japan, Australia, and, and India. So there's, there's a foundation to, to build on there. We designed the program um, in a way that's intended to be affordable and, and cost effective for institutions of all sizes. So um, from as little as, as 3,000 for teaching institutions and 13,000 for the, the largest research institutions. And I'd like to emphasize here that it doesn't always have to be the library that pays. So um, the information technology services um, can see great uh, appeal in Dryad, as can research offices. So I think the point was made earlier also that open sharing is an important component of research integrity. So going back to those offices to seek support um, is a potential avenue. And also what about the scientific departments? So there's increasing awareness among them about the importance of, of, of paying for the, the cost of dissemination of research and their funders. So, so that, that's an opportunity as well. Uh, in terms of the benefits of membership, Here's what we've got so far. So for the, the institutional members that, that join Dryad, we offer unlimited data de uh, publishing deposits. So all fees, including fees for large data, data sorry, large files are covered. So um, the, the authors will come in through the, data, the Dryad submission portal. We'll ask them if they have an institutional affiliation. We'll send them through to you via your SSO. And then once they're on the, the platform, they'll see your, your university branding. They'll know they're at home and they're not gonna get a bill for their, for their data. We offer a hands-on administrative dashboard so that you can see exactly what your researchers are doing on the Dryad platform and, and how much they're submitting and what the, what the state of their submissions is. We are, again, the, the branded instance, so you can very, very clear, or your, your authors, your researchers will very clearly see their institutional affiliation um, as they navigate the, the Dryad portal. And as I said a moment ago, Dryad institutional members um, have the opportunity to integrate Dryad um, with local resources. So um, whether you want the, the metadata or the full data, um, you can take it via our API and stick it in your repository or ILS system or, or another storage system. 
Our team uh, offers training and, and support, so from the, the point of, of integration, where uh, we're connecting uh, via SSO and, um, and getting you online with the system, our team will support you and, and, and help you to get online and, uh, and make everything smooth. And finally, uh, Dryad um, is, again, a, a membership organization, a 501c3, and so uh, registered members are, have um, the power to vote in our annual election, which is uh, the appointment of, of individuals to our board of directors. So, you know, we see a lot of potential here. It was this born of, of conversations here. Um, we're optimistic about, you know, your, your, your support and interest in this, in this model, but we'd like your feedback. We'd really like to hear about, you know, what about it appeals or, or what, do you, what about it um, you think could use a little bit more refining. Uh, so I'm here uh, for the rest of the day and my contact information is on the slide, so do, don't hesitate to, to reach out. So, so now I can't help but just offer a few reactions um, on, on thoughts for, for working together moving forward beyond this. So, you know, just having worked with institutions on open research programs before, um, I can't help but wonder about where, where else our Dryad collaboration might take us. So just a few ideas just after these eight or, or nine weeks at, at Dryad. So given my work at Spark and on projects like Open Access Week, I can't help but ask if we shouldn't collaborate around open data advocacy and education. So could Dryad be a depository or a locus for organized outreach? So from my vantage point, I'm seeing really fantastic resources coming out of our publisher partners that are describing the importance of, of open data and, and fair sharing. And I'm wondering, I know there are a lot of other organizations in the network that, who don't have the resources to produce that, so is there a way that we can channel them and share them and just make us, make us all a little bit more effective with the, the advocacy and the education? Second is um, having worked so closely with researchers um, over, over the last 10 years, albeit in, in biology and medicine um, in the main. Uh, I am, and, and having spent that time trying to convince them to change their publishing behaviors and, and how they judge their fellows through research assessment practices, I can't help but wonder what power there may be in, um, in, in connecting reuse with research assessment. So if we're successful in bringing the data to life using modern technology and, and getting the humans, convincing the humans to engage with it online, will we also be able to get the humans to value data sharing and to give credit to their colleagues for having shared their data. So there is, is there a feedback loop that we can create there that will then inform changes in, in research assessment practice? And finally, um, I know that there is great interest in helping community-driven and open source in initiatives to persist um, and to thrive in this competitive marketplace. And I'm interested as well, you know, on Dryad's behalf, I would like us to, to persist and, and thrive in this marketplace. And I've got lots of plans and ideas, and I know that institutions are, are working on this as well and have some plans, as, plans and ideas as well. So how can we work together? Where do our plans marry, and, and where do we learn from one another, and how do we build something that, that, that stands up in the long term? So that's it. Um, if you have any questions uh, for, for me, I'm happy to help, and John as well, and Danielle is on, on standby. So thank you very much for, for having us. I think if there are questions, if you don't mind coming up to the microphone at the front, that way we can see you as well as hear you. I think as people come up to the microphone, I would just say like one of the things that really resonates with me from the discussion is that at CDL, when we were doing our evaluation at the University of California, that that we were looking at Dryad really not just as a resource for the future, but also where our researchers were already going. So this idea of like being able to meet the researchers where they already were in a, in a platform that shared the values of what we were trying to achieve. Sorry. So my name's Charles Watkinson. I'm uh, AUL for Publishing at University of Michigan. And I, I know you have a, a, a sort of a vested interest in the answer to this question, but I, I, I mean, I think it's on all our minds, which is the relationship between institutional repositories and, um, and what, what were called earlier in this uh, meeting sort of generalist data repositories like, like, like Dryad. Um, and 
uh, it's, it's one of those tricky questions, but it's interesting to see that relationship playing out at some universities. So Humanities Commons being adopted as the institutional repository at Michigan State University, for example. And I wonder how you see that playing out uh, and um, where the opportunities for a university to ditch their own data repository and really embrace a tool like Dryad and just sort of thinking Honestly, you know, um, uh, the pros and cons and, and just, you know, the pathways uh, to that kind of work. And I know that's a huge question. Should we offer two perspectives, Inst Dryad and institutions? So, so Dryad, you know, quickly, you know, we, we are a, a, comp a complement supplement, you know, we want to exist alongside um, the, your other tools. So the Dryad focus is on, is on data and the Dryad focus is on curated data. So, um, so not, and, and not a domain repository, not a re repository that, that takes a lot of other objects. And we don't have a lot of strength in humanities yet, but, but we could have, so something to develop. But, but John, how do you see it from an institutional point of view? Um, I mean, if yeah, I think that Dryad has a lot of different ways that institutions can engage. So, but specifically from UC's perspective, my perspective within the University of California, um, you know, we are a research intensive system, you know, uh, we are in very similar to Michigan or Michigan State, you know, we have a need when it comes to data publishing. Um, that is great. Um, it is even, but even with that scale, even with our scale, we did run a data publishing platform for several years and the adoption was very low. And we had to be very soul searching in what was that, why, why was that happening? Why, why does the something at the scale of the University of California that has the resources and the ability and the, and the need still struggle to get 50 deposits a year, 20 deposits a year? You know, we're, we're publishing hundreds of thousands of articles but we're getting 20 data deposits. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we, even at our scale, cannot scale enough for our researchers to see us. And it becomes more of a question of marketing than it, you know, and name recognition and, and convincing publishers that there's a reason to work with UC and all of that kind of dynamic instead of just doing the work. And so what was interesting to us was how do we achieve those goals? How do we still support the research and get the, you know, and do it in a way that we consider best practice, but do it in a way that doesn't require us to sell our values, you know, or, or ditch our values. And so that's really where we came to Dryad was, um, we did ditch our data repository. We did move to Dryad. As Jen said, that's not a requirement to get involved in Dryad or anything, but for us, that was the reason. And, and the reason why is because even at the University of California, we couldn't convince, um, you know, PLOS or, Royal Society or somebody to integrate with our data repository. And I don't think we as a library community should assume that's ever going to happen. That will never happen. So we complain about the fact that people won't integrate with us one by one or won't listen to us one by one, but we're, it's just not achievable. So it's kind of, we have to start being realistic and start thinking about what goals will get us to, what, what actions will get us to our goals. And for UC, that was us bringing a generalist repository that shared our value, you know, a, a data repository like Dryad that was a nonprofit who was interested in curation and best practices to be, to be our solution. And um, I, I personally would say that that's what everybody in this room should do. Um, I think that we, are, we have diminishing returns on our individual implementations. And uh, we, we, we cannot um, achieve the goals that we are setting out for ourselves with individual implementations of a data strategy. I think we're meant to stop at 11. Yep. So why don't we come down um, from the podium and please just approach us and have a chat. But thank you again um, for, for staying and I look forward to working with all of you. Thanks.